Welcome to the Test Guild Performance and Site Reliability Podcast, where we all get together to learn more about performance testing with your host, Joe Calantonio. Hey, it's Joe, and welcome to another episode of the Test Guild Performance and Site Reliability Podcast. Today, we'll be talking with Roger all about JMeter, JMeter, Java, DSL, a really cool development that I just saw recently on a PerfBytes Twitch. So I thought you all would want to know more about it. If you don't know, Roger is a software engineer with more than 15 years of experience in development with a special focus on developing high traffic and resilient applications, which is really critical nowadays. And in his career, he's played different roles such as a developer, architect, and technical director. Currently, he's the CTO at Abstracta, a software quality focused company. He uses his experience and technical background to help different areas of business fostering innovation and always willing to help, which he's joining right now to help help us learn more about Java and more about JMeter and how we can programmatically create pro, uh, performance scripts. So really excited to have him on the show. You don't want to miss this episode. Check it out. This episode is brought to you by the awesome folks at SmartBear. Listen, we know load testing is tough, but necessary. So investing in the right tools to automate tests, identify bottlenecks and resolve issues fast, saves your organization both time and money. And that's why SmartBear created Load Ninja, a SaaS load testing tool to help teams get full visibility into performance so you can release quality software faster than ever. Make testing effortless and give it a shot. It's free and easy to try. Head on over to LoadNinja.com and learn more. Hey, Roger, welcome to the Guild. Hey, thank you. Awesome to have you. So, is there anything before, before we get into it? Is there anything I missed in your bio that you want the guild to know more about? No, I think that that's fine. I mean, it's it's more or less what I'm. <laughs> it describes me uh, good enough. <laughs> awesome. So I guess before we dive really into more detail, is uh, what is a uh, what is uh, this DSL? This JMeter DSL. Well, the JMeter DSL is just a. Uh, Thin layer, like a, it's a, an API, a, a, a library that you can use in, in Java, and you can use for designing and running JMeter, embedded JMeter. You don't have to install JMeter or anything like that. Uh, you just use the DSL, and it allows you w to easily create test plans and run them. You don't have to actually have a deep uh, skills on, on programming or JMeter itself. Uh, you have a user guide. Um, that's basically it. it what we are trying to do is shift left in performance testing, so making performance testing easier and uh, sooner in the in the development cycle of uh, the development itself. Nice. So I guess why though is it because um, JMeter for me uh, for a newcomer sometimes when you look at it, it seems overwhelming. So does this like you said it's it was created to make this process easier? So like you said, you could actually get your developers more involved earlier. Yeah, yeah, that's basically it. I, I myself, as you described, I, I was a developer uh, working a, a lot with high performance apl applications. And early on, I started uh, using JMeter, which was the most popular tool. So uh, when I identif when I started using it, I identified I was kind of uh, not comfortable enough doing uh, with the current UI that it has. That it's awesome. I mean, it's, it's a great way to start doing performance testing. But when you are starting to do, uh, when you want to, to, to program your test or you want to share your test and, and modularize it better, it starts to fall in kind of short or it's kind of get complex. When doing it in a programmatic way, it will be easier in general to, to manage at high scale. So that's why one of the main reasons that we decided to do this. And, and there was no like Java native uh, solution for doing this. So we started doing this, and after that, some other solutions came up. But but yeah, I mean, that's the main focus on, on why we decided to do it. Nice. So I'm very familiar with K6 and familiar with... Um, Gatling? Gatling. Yeah. And they, they all use this prog programmatic type of approach. Is this the same? Are you developing a Java, your JMeter scripts within Java, just typing up uh, the commands? Yeah, it's kind of the same. Uh, I see K6 as more JavaScript oriented or more like maybe front end if you like. Uh, so if you already work with, with JavaScript or maybe use Node.js for doing your, your backend servers, probably you, you, are, will, you will be a lot more comfortable with K6. Uh, Gatlin uh, requires a, a, 
a Scala environment, but they later on, after we released the first initial version of the Shemitter DSL, they also released a Java DSL, which is more comfortable to use for Java developers, but it's still, it is a Scala underneath. So you still, if you start debugging or something like that, uh, you will get that. But on top of all that, when you use Gatlin on K6, you lose all the ecosystem, but popularity, your knowledge about Shemitter and the tools that are around it. So it's kind of a bummer to have to stop using Shemitter to start using Gatlin just for, for the programming sake. I mean, Shemitter has a lot of flexibility, has a lot of support for protocols, and again, an ecosystem that you will lose if you move on to Gatlin or, or something similar. Uh, so that's like comparison between using Shemitter Java DCL and using Gatlin or K6. Great. Yeah, and a lot of people already know Gmeter, but like you said, it's like almost, uh, there's a high overhead to get up to speed with it. And also it seems like this would make it easier almost to fit into pipelines, CI, CD systems. So is this another advantage of, of this approach? Yeah, sure. I mean, totally. Uh, we, the, the, the way we encourage do, using the Shemitter DC, DC, DSL is using SheUnit or, or Test and She or any other uh, testing framework that you use. And just there you put your, your performance testing using Shemitter DCL, DSL, sorry. Um, it will just run with SheUnit or Test and She. So it will automatically be uh, supported by any CI CD uh, tool that you use. And you will get all the reports that you usually get with Sheunit or Test and She. And you don't have to actually install anything. You don't have to install Shemitter on the machine, or nor you have to install some or know how to invoke some command line tool. Uh, it's just it's an automatically integrated with any of the framework that you usually use for testing. So what do people need to get started though? They just import the library and then do they point to a machine that has Gmeter on it? Like how, how does it work behind the scenes? Yeah, in fact, you don't have to have a, a Shemitter uh, machine to, to run the test because you, you, how it works, you import the library, the library will automatically also import Shemitter libraries underneath, so the Shemitter core, and it will use Shemitter to run the test and to execute the text itself. itself. If you want to run the test at scale, for example, if you want to run a, in, a, in a cluster of machines that you already have with Shemitter, you can do it with the library. There is a, an embedded, uh, sorry, a remote engine or something like that. You can go there to the user guide uh, and check how you can do it. But you can also use, for example, one of the uh, service on the cloud, Shemitter execution engines like uh, BlazeMeter, Octoperf. We have uh, adapters for those two uh, already built in. But if you want to, I don't know, use another cloud service, let us know and we can implement some, some engine for that. Currently, the, the, the DSL, we are open to all, all suggestions. So currently, we are, we are asking people to request things and to, to come up with, with ideas to, for improvement because we are trying to create the best option or best tool that we can out of, of this solution. Wow. So, this so is if you have any questions, or, yeah. oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we'll have a link to uh, maybe uh, drop you a note or something for any suggestions directly, For because I think it's a great development. How long has this been out? Like I said, I just saw it with uh, uh, Mark Tomlinson, and you did a, a Twitch with them, but I don't know how long it's been around. Is it fairly new? Yeah, the, the first release that it was kind of a proof of concept was in August uh, 2020. So that was the first release. And we have come up with releases uh, from from then on, like one release a week, kind of, because some weeks we do several releases, some others we don't do any. Uh, in fact, the approach we are using for making releases and including features on the DSL are by people asking us things. We, we try not to implement things. We have a lot of things that, that, or ideas that we would like to implement, but we... Uh, wait for someone to ask the feature because we don't want the, the tool to be kind of over complex and don't have features that you might not use. That we think that Shemitter has come up to, to such a point that you, you sometimes you don't know when to use to one feature or when to use the other and sometimes you might use whatever uh, of the features. We try to come up with the reason for each of the features and we document so it's such research, uh, reasons sorry, in the user guide. So the, the idea is in the user guide, we, we say, okay, you, if you want to do this, you can use this. This is the best practice. We embed in the DSL all the good, uh, good practices 
that we have identified on the usage of Shameter. In Abstracta, we, are, we have a, a performance expert area that we have worked with Shameter for several years. <laughs> uh, so we have accumulated a lot of knowledge. Um, every design or every decision that we make to implement a feature, we base on those best practices and encourage users to, to use such good practices. So I guess that was kind of my next question. How did Abstract get involved in this then? Is it built from a need from your company? And you're like, wait a minute, we're getting a lot of customers that can benefit from them. Let's, let's open source it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I had this idea when uh, I, was, I was not working at Abstracta. I was in another company. And I contacted the CEO of, of Abstracta because I knew him and said, hey, guys, do you know of any tool that can do this with Shameter? And say, uh, no, I don't know any. <laughs> so I was working with Shameter for some years. Then uh, after several years, I moved into Abstracta. And when I moved into Abstracta, I, I kind of saw the same or kind of uh, suffer of the same pains. And I saw also the same pains on, on other teams in, in, the, in Abstracta. So I decided to come up with, okay, this is enough. I mean, <laughs> we have to do something about it. And I did a proof of concept over a weekend. I show it to the CEO and the CEO said, yeah, this, this looks great. Let, let's put it like open source software and see if the community gets any attention, if they like it. And that's how we, do, we did it. And we keep uh, investing on it as we see that the community is interested in the solution and is collaborating and asking things. So that's the way we are working on it. We don't want it to be kind of a, an abstract thing. We want it to be a community thing. So we want to involve other companies uh, helping us develop in this, uh, the entire community, the entire open source community. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of why we, we came up our, or why we invest on it. Uh, what, why is open source <laughs> by itself? We think that is, uh, I mean, open source is the best way for getting the, the best solution. We want to not only, if you know Abstracta or if you have kind of research about Abstracta, we, we collaborate with a lot of papers. We uh, uh, exchange a lot of knowledge that we have uh, uh, accumulated during the, the process of, of, I mean, through our expertise or our experience with, with clients. But we also implement uh, software, I mean, uh, solutions that uh, uh, ease our processes. Shimeter DSL is one of these solutions. We have open source some other solution. For example, there is a, a virtual service for TCP that is named Wiresham. And from the very beginning of Abstracta, the Abstracta was born out of a product Abstracta implemented. That was a testing solution for Shenexus, that is a, a particular software or framework for creating software in a codeless solution. But yeah, local solution, sorry. <laughs> Nice. So as we said, Jamie has been around for a while and it seems like they've added on to all these different plugins. You could do like the UI is, you could do all kinds of things. So is there anything missing from the Java DSL that if uh, people need to be aware of their hardcore JMeter users already? Yeah, sure. I mean, as, as I said, we haven't implemented everything that is already built in JMeter and we wait for people asking things before we implement them on the DSL. Uh, the main or the core logic or the, 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 the things that are most used, or used by, by people are already built in. For example, we have uh, if controllers, while, uh, for, for each, uh, regex extractors, CSV dataset, HTTP requests, headers, uh, cookies, etc. Like the core thing is already in the DSL. But there are a lot of things that Jemito already provides. For example, it has support for RTE protocol, Citrix, WebSockets, uh, HTTP2, uh, I don't know, <laughs> a lot. So, but we haven't implemented them yet. If you ask for them, or uh, we can easily implement them. In fact, the, 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 the process of implementing new features in the DSL is quite easy because we just kind of come up with some way to create these elements or these Shameter elements and provide a builder or a, a method that makes them easy to use. The, the part that takes more time is like the analysis of what things we should include or not in, in the elements. But the implementation itself, the code is quite, quite simple. So yeah, usually we, we try to, if someone asks something, we try to come up with a solution as soon as possible. If we think that it's something that an entire community will benefit from it or it's a common use case. If it is something 
too much specific, we might uh, tell the people, okay, yeah, maybe you can create something or we might provide some solution for that, that is not maybe incorporated in DSL, but in general, we try to cover all the needs of the users. But again, we, there are a lot of things in ShameMeter. <laughs> we don't want to cover everything at the beginning and we want to build as people need them. I guess the opposite question then, uh, there's so much in JMeter, but is there anything missing in JMeter that you think would be added to uh, this uh, JMeter DSL? Ah, sorry. Uh, yeah, we, we added some things. For example, uh, execution of the on, on the cloud environment, for example, um, uh, Octopart and BlazeMeter are things that are not like built in on JMeter or you have to come up with, with ways to do it. So we have built some things built in on the DSL. Uh, Another thing, for example, we come, come, come up with a kind of a live dashboard that uh, mixes some, some of the charts, maybe you already saw in the Perfbyte uh, demo, that uh, mixes some of the charts in Shameeter and show them just in one view and you don't have to kind of go through all the, all the charts. Um, I don't know, uh, there is, for example, an integration that is there in the user guide and it's in the repository about user influx DB and Grafana with the Shameeter DSL. So you don't have to, if you want to, to set up that, you already have them set up there. Uh, about best practices, for example, in Shameeter, it's quite easy, for example, to do a post without putting a content type, which is usually, I mean, if you send a post to, to a server, usually you have to send a content type. So we have already in the DSL, whenever you use a post, you kind of not, not force, but in the easiest way, you will need to put a content type. You can skip over uh, over that if you don't want to put a content type. But in general, these are kind of the best practices and things that we have built in on the on the DSL. We also have implemented an RPS uh, throughput controller that is just a mix of, of different components. For example, we mix the uh, throughput shaping timer with a concurrency uh, thread group, and we put that just in one, in one thing so it's simpler for users to use. The same goes, for example, with random CSV data set that you don't have to say, okay, I, I want to use this plugin just for the random order. You just use the CSV data set and say random order, order and underneath the DSL will use the, the proper plugin or the proper extension for, for that particular features. Those are kind of the things that we simplify and are easier and are built in on DSL while we, while if you want to use Shameeter, you will have to do like some extra effort or some extra, extra thing. And those things are also things that we are looking for. I mean, if users say, see that something is a common pattern that with Shameeter might be difficult or requires several steps, Please come up with ideas and we will implement them. Some of the ideas that we have, we have plans later on to contribute them to Shameeter, but some others uh, don't make much sense on Shameeter themselves because are kind of uh, things that are uh, inherent on the usage of the of Shameeter inside code. Like it makes them make it, makes it easier to use Shameeter, and you will need it in code, but in the UI they don't make much sense. So that's there are things that we might contribute to Shameeter, some others that make not much sense. So it sounds like you've been, it's been available for almost a year now. Next next month will make it a full year. So have you seen any weird use two cases? Years. Oh, Sorry. two years. Oh, 2020. I was thinking 2021. So two years. So have you seen any uh, weird use cases of, of people using it in a way that you thought, well, I didn't even think you could use it in that way. Like I know people... Uh, because it's just a library within Java, can, is anyone using it with Selenium, doing a call with JMeter and then using the data and within their their, uh, their automation frameworks or anything like that? Yeah, I, I don't know if weird is, is the good word, but we have seen like very interesting use cases. For example, we, we have seen, uh, we have been talking with some teams on, on Russia that they use, uh, they have created their own DSL on top of the DSL and they, they have created kind of a, simpler way of creating performance tests without having to, to specify thread groups and the like. Uh, I, they haven't shown me the, 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 the solution, but they, it, it seemed really, really nice. It was like some kind of codeless solution for performance testing, something like that. Uh, that was very interesting, uh, but I haven't seen the, the final product or, or any demo yet. 
Uh, some other use cases that we have, uh, I have talked with users, uh, there have been two users, two separate users that have integrated uh, kind of a functional way, like functional test uh, with rest assured, they implement the, the test with rest assured or Cucumber or something like that. And then they use the DSL to convert those tests to performance tests. And they have kind of uh, an architecture of tests. Uh, I mean, it's really interesting. Uh, and I, I don't know if they will be doing that with Chemeter. I mean, uh, I guess that the DSL as is easier to program or easier to integrate with programming features, make it, make it easier to build things on top of it. It's kind of, okay, I have this base block, I can implement things and integration more easily than doing it with the JMX of JMeter or actually the, the code of JMeter itself. Yeah, because you don't actually need JMeter on the machine. You could just run it in containers easily. So it seems ideal for, for that kind of a, a user case for sure. Are there any gutches though when people do this? Um, I mean, do you use this for an enterprise-wide type of performance test? Is this more just for like a smoke performance test or like an initial performance test before you do an official large-scale traditional uh, stress load test? Yeah, I mean, by default, when you put on the test plan run, it will run uh, an embedded engine on the, and you will be limited by the engine itself, like the, the, the load generator itself capabilities. Usually when you want to, to run a enterprise test, you will like to do it on a cluster of machines, which you are not uh, tied to, to, the, to the limitations of the hardware or the, 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 the server where, where the, the Shemeter DSL runs itself. So that is kind of, the, kind of the gotcha or care that you have to do. I mean, you can run it with the just run with the embedded engine, but usually for running really interesting performance tests or low tests, you will probably want to use, to use a cloud, <coughs> sorry, a cloud service. Um, aside from that, there are not any gadgets. I mean, it's just running performance Shemeter test. All the gadgets that you might have with, with Shemeter might be gadgets on, on Shemeter DSL. You need a JVM, which is pretty standard and very, very common on, on any CI CD or any environment to, to run any, any tool. But I don't know. Any other gadgets? I mean, about what you meant, like long-term maintenance or maybe enterprise performance testing, it is easier to modularize or to reuse parts of the DSL than using JMX, like in JMeter. JMeter usually to modularize a test plan, you have to use include controllers with fragments or create different, different uh, JMX files, which they by themselves don't make much sense or variables. You have to come up with variables, but with programming, it's usually easier to do that. You can create abstractions with classes or functions that you reuse for creating uh, different parts of the test plan. You can put pass parameters to parameterize this test. Uh, I don't know, it's in, in the long term, I mean, for creating very complex tests, it's, I think it is easier or simpler to, to use the, a programmatic way than using the Shemeter GUI, which might be kind of difficult. Also visibility of the test plan is easier on the DSL or on the call because you see everything that you have configured, everything you have set. And on Shemeter, to, to get a full view of the test plan, you, you have to go over each of the elements and, and each of the tabs to see any advanced features. And you have to already know what are the default ones and what are the, the things that the user might, might have changed on that test plan. So it's, it's, diff, it's more difficult to understand what is the full extent of a test plan in Shemeter, I think, than in, in the DSL. You can even in the DSL, uh, if you modularize the code, use Code Navigator on the IDEs, all the IDEs features like auto-completion, built-in uh, documentation are already there, like all the features that usually programmers have and you kind of lose while using Shemeter uh, because Shemeter is a UI and they can, it's not a, an IDE. I mean, the IDEs have evolved a lot and, and they are pretty smart about that. So we kind of reuse all the smartness or all the evolution of IDEs in, in the DSL and benefit from, from using it. We keep going back to it fits better into the ecosystem because it fits into your CI CD systems. You could do code reviews, I guess. You could check it in just like all your other code, all the other assets. They all live in 
uh, the same location. It just seems like a better, more natural flow if your developers are going to be contributing uh, along the way. So, yeah, yeah, sure. Cool. So I, I know with JMeter, a lot of times they have um, there's a JMeter recorder. Is there something similar with this? Is someone just programmatically straight uh, typing out what they need to do? Yeah. Right now, if you want to use the, the recorder or a recording approach, what you can do is use the JMeter recorder or the Chrome extension that Blaze Meter or any of the solution that you have to 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 record. There is a Blaze Meter extension that you install in the Chrome. A browser and then you can record and you download the JMX so you can use that as well and while after you have the JMX either recording with JMeter or this Chrome extension or any other solution maybe you have a hard file that you created on your browser and then you convert it on Lodeon or some other solution that has this kind of conversion software uh, once, once you have the JMX the um, DSL provides a tool that is named JMX to DCL that automatically converts the JMX to DSL code. And then you can start working with, with the DSL code from then on. Uh, you can also go back to the JMX if you want. I mean, there is a save to JMX method that you can use if you want to, I don't know, continue editing the, the, the JMX on JMeter, or maybe there is something in DSL that is still not supported by JMeter and you don't want to get stuck until we release something with, about that. You can save to JMX and continue working with JMeter if you like. So you have all the full cycle, like go back and forth uh, from JMX to DSL. Okay, Roger, before we go, is there one piece of actual advice you can give to someone to help them with their performance testing efforts? And what's the best way to find, contact you, or learn more about Java DSL? Yeah, I think that part of it is, is what I already mentioned, but um, <clears throat> I think that, that the best thing, that like the, the, the best action is go to the user guide, uh, check it, uh, and invest in it, try, try the DSL. It's just downloading, a, it's just putting a dependency on your Maven project or Gradle project and use it if you already have Java. Uh, if you not, it's pretty easy to install Java and start working. In fact, uh, I have tried it with a tool that is Shebang. I don't know if you know, it's kind of a new tool, but it's a, a, nice, a nice tool that I have it, uh, discovered that allows you to run Java code just from the command line as if it were like a Groovy script or Kotlin script. So you don't have to actually compile or use an IDE to run it. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah, uh, to contact me, you can follow me on River. Uh, uh, sorry, on Twitter, and you can direct message me. My account is Rabelenda, uh, and also you can contact me via LinkedIn if you want, uh, Roger Abelenda. Um, and yeah, we can talk about that. We can also you can contact me also in the Discord channel about Shemeter Shava DSL, all with hyphens in the middle. Um, I think Thanks that's again for your performance testing awesomeness. The links to everything of value we covered in this episode, head on over to testguild.com forward slash P93. And while you're there, make sure to click on the Try Them Bolt Today link under the exclusive sponsor section to learn all about SmartBear's two awesome performance test tool solutions, Load Ninja and Load UI Pro. And if the show has helped you in any way, why not rate and review it in iTunes? Reviews really do matter in the rankings of the show, and I read each and every one of them. So that's it for this episode of the Test Guild Performance and Site Reliability Podcast. I'm Joe. My mission is to help you succeed with creating end-to-end -end full stack performance testing awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the Test Guild Performance and Site Reliability Podcast. Head on over to testguild.com for full show notes, amazing blog articles, and online testing conferences. Don't forget to subscribe to the Guild to continue your testing journey.